Kazuth is the god of elemental fire, an uncaring deity who rarely bothers himself with the trifles of the prime material. His faith is likely still strongest in and around Thay, where that specific Kazuthan element espouses conquest, power, and control. I'm Ben Dignan, and welcome once again to Religion in the Realms. Titles. Kazuth goes by the following titles. The Lord of Flames, the Fire Lord, Tyrant Among Fire Elementals, God of Elemental Fire, and the Tyrant Among Fire. Kazuth has no recorded aliases. Portfolio and Domains. Kazuth's portfolios are Elemental Fire and Purification Through Fire. Kazu's suggested domains for 5th edition are Light, though the Forest domain may want to be considered as well, and is not listed in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, since at the time, the Forge domain had yet to be created. Appearance and Manifestations Common depictions of Kazuth show him as a pillar of flame that reaches up into the sky. Likely this depiction has come about due to its shared characteristics with his avatar. Fire Newts, however, believe that the true form of Kazuth is one of a grand lizard. We'll talk about this later, but this is the form the Fire Newts claim Kazuth held when he left before their very eyes. Kazuth's personal weapon is a tendril of flame that he forms out of his very being. This fiery weapon functions as a plus four spike chain mechanically with a brilliant energy and flaming burst properties in third edition. Kazu's avatar appears as a 60 foot tall and 20 foot in diameter column of red fire. His voice speaks out from this column in a hiss alongside occasional crackles and pops. This all can be heard by those within hundreds of yards around the avatar. For Kazuthans, any large fire is a manifestation of one kind or another of Kazuth on the prime material. This is also true for those large fires that engulf homesteads and wild spaces. Such beliefs do not endear Kazuthans to many people, and oftentimes people will wonder if the Kazuthans themselves were the ones who started these large fires in the first place. After all, the successful ignition of any fire is believed to be a minor sign of favor from Kazuth. Some may hold the same belief that Kazuth is manifested through the less dangerous practices of forging and smelting. Kazuth is served by and makes use of the following creatures. Fire elementals, salamanders, fire snakes, ifrit, fire bats, smoke and magma para-elementals, azers, fire newts, smoke mephits, and magma mephits. Abilities. The divine ranks of Kazuth, along with his fellow elemental deities, is a bit of a mess across the editions. Initially in first edition, Kazuth is given the rank of a lesser power. Early on in second edition's Forgotten Realms campaign box set, Kazuth and the other three elemental deities are listed as quasi powers. Though going forward in second edition, there was most likely a decision on the part of the writers to make a shift in the categorization of the four elemental deities to that of greater powers. They would hold this rank in 3rd edition as well. While we know Kazuth to have been a primordial entity, 4th edition was the first edition to place the primordial tag upon them. It's possible, and I am making assumption here, but this variance likely comes about since the four elemental deities are not beholden to the same rules as their fellows in the Faerunian pantheon. In the second edition box set I mentioned earlier, this is hinted at when it says, quote, These are great and powerful true neutral beings, but for the most part uncaring, even hostile to, any human attempts to gain their attention. They are placed within the quasi-powers as they do, in general, care about mortal problems and worship, and are not covered by the sanctions that control the major gods. End quote. Personally, this section clarified a great number of questions I had about how all four gods are greater deities 
despite not having large populations of worshippers within Faerun. Although Kazuth could be an exception in this case, given the popularity of his faith within Thay, though I figure at most this would make him a lesser deity, if he was still considered a traditional deity in the Pantheon. I would speculate that, in 5th edition, Kazuth holds the rank of a greater deity. In 3rd edition, when he was categorized as a greater deity, Kazuth was given statistics in the Face and Pantheon supplement. Some of these are his given abilities. Any role Kazuth makes always comes up with the best result for him. Kazuth has divine senses that will allow him to see, hear, touch, and smell out to a range of 17 miles, which is approximately 27 kilometers, from any of his worshippers, his holy sites, objects attributed to him, or in a location where his name or one of his titles has been spoken within the last hour. He can then divide these senses out to 20 different locations at once. Kazuth can block out the divine senses of those who are of the same divine rank as him or lower, at two different locations, for a maximum 17 hours. Kazuth is also granted with a specific divine portfolio sense, whereby he is able to receive any fire 17 10 days, or 170 days, before it sparks, while it is burning, or 17 10 days after that fire dies off. Kazuth can create any magic item that produces fire. The abilities and statistics for Kazu's avatar can be found in 2nd edition's Faiths and Avatars. We will touch on some of that avatar's abilities. Kazu is regarded as a native to the Primaterial Plane despite his deep connection to the Inner Planes. As such, abilities and spells that would normally work on extraplanar creatures, his avatars are immune to. Unsurprisingly, these avatars are completely immune to abilities and spells that deal out any sort of fire damage. The Avatar's own fire-based abilities ignore and penetrate any sort of resistances to fire present on a creature, magical or natural. The Avatar can attack with a flaming fist attack or emit a scorching wave of heat at their foes. Any creature who does not shield their eyes from the Avatar has to succeed on a saving throw or fall under the effects of a fire charm spell. For those unfamiliar like myself with a lot of second edition spells, it reads like a spell that combines the effects of the hallucinatory terrain and suggestion spell with a source of fire as its focus. These avatars can easily leave Faerun by finding a large fire emerging with it. The avatars will not attempt to cross any body of water or liquid that is non-flammable should they be wider than the avatar is. Personal History Kazuth is said to be a primordial being manifesting soon after the creation of the multiverse, though some think that the name Kazuth could be a title that passes on to successors to the station presiding over fire. In that sense, there may have been several Kazuths in existence. Kazuth was one of three primordials who did not war with the gods at the time Abur was split from Toril. Perhaps for this reason, these four primordial elementals were allowed a place among the rest of the gods of the Faeronian pantheon. Despite his stated indifference in the Forgotten Realms, Kazu's presence has been directly felt on the surface. In negative 150 Dale Reckoning, a group of Ramatharan wizards summoned an avatar of Kazu to dispatch an invading armies from their enemy Narfel. Ramathar was a nation situated in current day Thay in Aglarond. The wizards did not foresee Kazu then turning around on them in punishment for their arrogance and thinking that they could just summon him to directly do their dirty work. Kazu's attack on both forces was the final act in a ten-year conflict known as the Great Conflagration, which would leave both Narfel and Ramathar in a ruinous state. As a result, this region dealt with continuous fires for well over a decade. Kazu's physical presence would not be felt again until 1357 Dale Reckoning. Then, Thay was embroiled in a conflict with salamanders from the Plain of Fire. This conflict came to be known as the Salamander Wars. Previous to the conflict, Thay and rulers had approached Afridi and salamanders in the Plain of Fire to gauge their interest in invading and capturing some coastal cities in Thay's name. After an agreement was made, a permanent portal to the Plain of Fire was established, and these coastal cities were soon set ablaze. With the coastal cities eventually conquered, they found that its attentions turned elsewhere. However, the elementals were not so ready to be done on the prime material. 
The Thayans' intentions were to always send back the elementals once their goals were achieved. The Ifridi were convinced to return to the Plain of Fire, but the Salamanders refused and went after the Thayan city of Priador. The city burned for a year with unending conflict. That was until Kazu's avatar was summoned forth by a red wizard. The avatar and those elementals that followed with them dispatched the salamanders back to the plane of fire. Since then, Kazuth has remained an ever popular faith in Thay, and the Kazuthan faith grew as a result. Fire Newts, who are Kazuthan clerics, tell of how their species was created by Kazuth in the mythical past of Faerun. This myth speaks to how the Fire Newts once were some other species under the lordship of the World Serpent. Going off on a bit of a tangent to explain who the World Serpent is, the World Serpent is a primordial deity whose aliases were venerated by several serpent-related creatures, chief among these being the Saruk, one of the legendary creator races of the Forgotten Realms. Such details reach back into the far past of Faerun, in the negative 30,000th Dale Reckoning, in a period known by scholars as the Days of Thunder. At some time in what is likely, and I'm guessing here, the distant past with an indeterminate year, Kazuth reached out to whomever the progenitor to the Fire Newts were and granted them with their innate fiery characteristics. Within the burning rift found beneath Chult, the Fire Newts found freedom and a new destiny. From that day forth, the Fire Newts had a new patron deity. In 1358 Dale Reckoning, during the Time of Troubles, Many thought Kazuth had avoided being brought down to the surface of Faerun in avatar form much like the others in the Pantheon. Little did they know that Kazuth instead had appeared where he once freed and created the Fire Newts long ago in the Burning Rift. There Kazuth's avatar merged with the Fire Newt tribal leader called Chasan. Chasan would hold Kazuth's essence within him and effectively be Kazuth's walking avatar form. With newfound power, Chasan led his tribe into a war with the Terra Folk, the pterodactyl humanoids also found upon Chult. Kazuth would eventually leave Chasan's body at the end of the Time of Troubles, and Chasan would be incinerated and killed outright at Kazuth's departure. Chasan would be resurrected in a sense to serve his patron deity. He was, and maybe still is, a new creature known as a Death Flame, whose abilities are akin to that of a Death Knight though with a fiery bent. In this new form, Chasan conquered the surrounding Fire Newt communities and ruled over them. He did so through the help of tactics said to be taught to him by Kazuth himself. With so many under his rule, there was growing discontent among the warriors as to Chasan's leadership. The clerics gave Chasan their full support as Chasan had been clearly blessed many times over by their patron deity. To me, Chasan read like a chosen of Kazuth, though he is never explicitly given such a title. Chasan seemed unconcerned by the opinions of the Fire Newts, but perhaps this hints as what is now not present in the Fire Newt lore for 5th edition. Looking forward in two 5th edition sources, there was a possible falling out with the Fire Newts and Kazuth. Especially in the Tomb of Annihilation adventure, the Fire Newts featured in that adventure are adherents to the evil elemental Prince of Fire, Imex. Going off the description of both the Fire Newts in Tomb of Annihilation and Volo's Guide to Monsters, there's no mention of a relationship at all with Kazuth. Was this a possible oversight? Possibly. Though I want to propose that maybe, just maybe, the Fire Newts found a way out from under Chasan's rule by turning their backs on Kazuth and forging some sort of deal with Imex. If anyone has any insight into this, especially if it's found in one of the various Forgotten Realms novels, please do not hesitate to reach out and let me know. I still think there is an equal possibility that Wizards of the Coast overlooked or ignored the past lore and went ahead with these new details about Fire Newts. Personality Kazuth is listed as a neutral aligned deity or unaligned deity if you follow the alternate alignments presented in 4th edition. Kazuth is mostly indifferent to those who venerate him though he gives out powers frequently without much care behind such gifts. Personally, I don't agree with the neutral alignment that was given to Kazuth, however. More than a couple times, Kazuth is described as a tyrant who prefers to have things under his order. At the very least, Kazuth should probably be a lawful neutral, if not lawful evil deity. 
I have a feeling, though, going back even to 1st edition, the writers have wanted the four elemental deities to remain neutral despite how their various personalities and histories are written. It is said that Kha'Zix has goals for himself and his faith in the Forgotten Realms, though it may be that only his divine followers have any insight to what his plans may be. It is far more apparent that Kha'Zix is interested instead in what transpires in, on the inner planes. He sees himself as the dominant lord of the four elements, Still, it has not gone without notice that Kazuth has commanded far more many faithful than the other three elemental deities on Faerun. Though that may just be that many Kazuthans tend to perish earlier than others. Personal Realms In the Great Wheel cosmological model used in 1st edition, 2nd edition, and is the assumed default model for 5th edition Forgotten Realms, Kazuth resides on the inner plane of the elemental plane of fire. In the World Tree model used in 3rd edition Forgotten Realms, Kha'Zuth resides on the same plane. On the plane of fire, there is no distinct layers to speak of like those found in the outer planes. Kha'Zuth's realm on its inner plane is known as the Crimson Pillar. The elemental plane of fire is a plane of roiling magma, volcanic rock, toxic gases, continuous flame, and insufferable heat. Humanoids not naturally resistant to fire and or heat cannot last long here without providing themselves protection from the environment through magic or other means. The majority of the plane is a boundless sea of compressed flame that does not look all that different from red hot coals. This quote-unquote liquid, and I use that term loosely, is consistent to that of water and can be swum through if a creature can prove to be immune to the heat. There are even some vessels that have been made to specifically cross the Flaming Sea. Throughout the plane is found a multitude of fiery creatures not just limited to elementals. Their outposts dot the plane and may serve as some refuge for those who travel here. Though one settlement stands out above the rest, the legendary Afridi city of Brass. Kazuth is one of the major entities who inhabit the plane of fire. There's Imex and the lesser known Zaman rule, also hold their domains here, but neither of them are as powerful nor a deity like Kazuth. Kazuth has to keep his attention on Imax, as Imax remains a threat to his authority. Otherwise, Kazuth and those under his thumb protect the plane of fire from any substantial outside influences. Kazuth's realm, the Crimson Pillar, despite its name, is an immense glowing blue-white hot globe of flame 10 miles in diameter. The realm floats above the fiery sea, and is located towards the center of the plane of fire. So hot is the Crimson Pillar that creatures standing even a hundred miles away from it take damage. This damage only progresses in severity the closer one gets. Even the natives to the plane of fire suffer damage. Those who are non-natives take double that damage. Kazuth and his court reside within the globe. He will grant those he expects in the Crimson Pillar with the need of protection to be immune to the disastrous heat though with the briefest of thoughts, Kazuth can take that protection away. Within the World Axis cosmology present in 4th edition, Kazuth resides within the elemental chaos. Kazuth's personal realm on this plane is known as the Undying Pyre. It is a magnificent tower made of searing flame, pitch black smoke, and volcanic gas. The region immediately around the tower is called the Burning Lands. Kazuth compels the tower to travel the elemental chaos, and the burning lands travel along with it. The Undying Pyre provides new flame throughout the elemental chaos. Kazuth also stops his round to meet with the Ifrits of the City of Brass and the God of Fire Giants, Surtur. Allies and Allegiances Despite his indifference to those deities who exist outside the inner planes, Kazuth does have what I liken to be minimal alliances. Mordin, the lawful good head of the Dwarven Pantheon, aka the Mordin Saman, and Flandel Steelskin, the neutral good god of smithing and mining in the Gnomish Pantheon, both hold minimal alliances with Kazuth, given the heat and flame that is so vital to their craft work. Any sort of communication with Kazuth and these two gods is minimal. A monitor is listed as an ally of his in 2nd edition's Faiths and Avatars though this was when Amonitor was listed as dead. It's understandable that Kazuth and Amonitor, the, the Faerudian sun god, would hold some sort of alliance, though no details are given about their alliance. 
Finally, Kazuth holds an alliance with the fire god Surtur from the giant pantheon. Not much is said about their alliance other than in 4th edition, as I mentioned earlier, he does visit with this god. At least in the 3rd edition Faiths and Pantheon sourcebook, there was mention of Kazuth flirting with the idea of establishing an alliance with Bane. This given their shared dislike of disorganization and chaos. Nothing past this was ever mentioned though. 2nd edition's Faith and Avatars does note that Kazuth did hold alliance with Bane's now deceased son, Iyaktu Zim. So maybe Kazuth was just continuing to pursue an alliance with that family line. Enemies Kazuth's primary and only listed foe is the elemental god of water, Istitia. In Kazuth's mind, Istitia is nothing but a weak and incompetent god. Istitia and his followers actively work against any sort of Kazuthan plan that, that they become aware of. Symbols in the Faerunian pantheon, Kazu's faith has a variety of symbols with no set standard. Some examples of these symbols include a twining red flame, a leaping flame, a flaming orb. Finally, regionally, in Thay, a scepter outlined in fire. Central Dogma From Faiths and Pantheons, a 3rd edition supplement. Quote, those fit to succeed will do so. Kazu's faith is innately superior to all other faiths, particularly that of Estitia's. Fire and purity are the same. Smoke is produced by air in its jealousy. The reward of successful ambition is power. Reaching a higher state is inevitable, accompanied by difficulty and personal pain of some sort. Kazu sends his pure fire to cleanse us all and temper our souls so that we can achieve a pure state. Expect to be tested and rise to the challenge, no matter what difficulty and pain it brings. Those above you have proven their worth and deserve your service. Guide others to Kazu's pure light so that he may reforge all life into its essential form. End quote. Presence of the Faith as a neutral deity, Kazu's clerics have a tendency to vary greatly in alignment. They tend to be chaotic neutral, lawful evil, lawful good, lawful neutral, neutral, neutral evil, and neutral good. Given the disparate alignments found throughout the Kazuthan faith, their perspective of what Kazu to them is equally disparate. These range from viewing Kazuth as a source of purification through fire, an innovative spark for smiths and metal workers, tempered reason, a mysterious presence found within the flames, a zealous desire for arson and pyromancy, or the very origin of passion. In the early 2nd edition Forgotten Realms setting box set, those groups who worship the four elemental deities are referred to as disparate cults with varying practices and perspectives. Though going forward in 2nd edition, there seems to have been an intentional shift in the design of the worship of the four elemental deities and their faithful to the point of framing them within the same bounds as the other Faeronian pantheon members. As mentioned in Kazuth's history, Kazuth became an important faith in Thay. Kazuthan places of worship are numerous in that nation. This faith is said to be one of the few avenues a person from lesser station can rise themselves up in Thay's prejudiced society. Not only that, many among the ranks of the Red Wizards are worshippers of Kazuth. Kazuthan clergy are an exception to the ban on all but red wizards wearing red robes and thay. Red wizards may be found tra traveling with Kazuthan clergy and monks in their entourages. These Kazuthans are typically paid to accompany the wizard rather than serve in some sort of obligation. While the red wizards rule the nation of thay, they need to play nice with the Kazuthan faith for the fear of a popular uprising in the general populace on the side of the Kazuthan faith. You will see that while Kazuth's faith does have different pockets of worship with differing ideals and practices, the Kazuthans from faith are described in far greater detail. This may bias people into thinking that the lawful tendencies of this regional sect, which no doubt is by far the largest, is the only way Kazuth is worshipped. Personally, I would have preferred to read and tell you about how Kazuthan sects differ across the continent, but in reality, the Thay and Kazuthans dominate the material available to us, with no mention of any others save a few details here or there. 
Historically, I don't even know if the large staff that caused it is still as present in Thay. At least in the 4th edition era of the realms, Sas Tam, the ruler of Thay, outlawed all other Thay and Thay, aside from Bane, after Bane and Tam formed an alliance in 1385 Dale Reckoning. Though given how entrenched Khazu's faith was in Thay, it may have taken a bit of a hit for a while, but still remains strong if you were asking me. Saz, Tam, and Bane could no longer hold an alliance for all I know, and the accepted faiths in Thay are just as varied as they were before any mention of this alliance. Details being as slim as they are for 5th edition, it is entirely up to speculation. I will mention here that Alex Kammer and Ed Greenwood are working on a book all about Thay at the moment. I know the two of them put out the Border Kingdom sourcebook on the DMs Guild a while back, which is said to be officially approved as canon by Wizards of the Coast. So I will be keeping my eyes out for that in the coming future. I have attached a link to the description of this video which shows these details. Some Kazuthans are zealous in their worship, preaching the superiority of fire over the other three elements. Unfortunately, they may take this to the extreme and destroy and hurt much with the fiery magic they wield. Given the hatred between Kazus and Istitia's faith, the two faiths are in constant open conflict. Where such conflicts happen goes unsaid though. To outsiders looking in on the Kazuthan faith, it seems unusual to them that people would be willing to worship a deity who ultimately has limited interest in the future of the realms. Some may see not just Kazus, but all four faiths of the elemental deities as nothing more than glorified cults. This is in spite of the fact that these worshippers are granted divine gifts and powers, not unlike the others who follow the rest of the Faerunian deities. Others see the Kazuthan face as an enigmatic organization that has a needlessly complex hierarchy. Suspicions are high as well, given how harsh and violent Kazuthans can react to their critics, while at the same time welcoming new members a little too emphatically. The organization has been heavily criticized for how many casualties and deaths occur within the lower ranks. This despite protests of the lesser clergy saying they welcome the conditions Kazu's faith places upon them. Such suspicion isn't unwarranted, however. The Kazuthans internally make it a point to send their lessers out on tasks and quests known to be deadly and beyond the lesser's skill level. To which higher ranking Kazuthans scoff and say that only those who return successful are those with the needed ambition and drive to truly serve Kazuth. Kazuth is a popular deity among the Fire Genasi population throughout Faerun. Most tend to revere the aspects of fire and flame attached to Kazuth rather than the aspect of purification. Fire Newts are strong adherents to Kazuth. Within their groups, the daily tasks of their lives are governed by Kazuth and clerics. These clerics watch over the hatching of newborn Fire Newts, the preparation of food, conducting torture and sacrifice, and leading their communities in rites and prayers. Collectively, these fire new clerics are called the Chalices of Brass. Clerics are the only real spellcasters present in their society, given their lack of ability to learn the arcane. Should a hatchling prove unable to break through the shell of their egg in under one minute, they are deemed too weak by these clerics. Such an event is viewed as an ill omen telling a cause-use displeasure with the specific tribe of fire newts. The hatchling is taken and sacrificed in cause-use name. Such sacrifices are rare, but clerics may manipulate a hatchling's efforts in an attempt to harm a rival family line. It is abundantly clear that Fire Newts are directly favored by Kazuth, despite his declared aloofness to things transpiring on Faerun. Out of any species on the continent, the Fire Newts have served as his longest standing adherents. Hierarchy and Structure of the Clergy Collectively, Kazuth and clergy may be called Firewalkers. Kazuthan monks might be referred to as Faithful Flames. The clergy is divided into two main bodies, the Tendrils and the Burning Braziers. The Tendrils are far greater in number and inhabit Kazuthan places of worship. They are the ones who perform the ceremonies, maintain temple business and affairs, and preach locally. The Burning Braziers are smaller and form the adventuring and missionary population in the faith. Critics of the Kazuthan faith call the braziers the Burning Brigade. While there are Kazuthans who vary along the alignment spectrum, the majority of Kazuthans tend to hold a neutral or lawful neutral alignment, no doubt born out of the popularity and reach of the Thayan sect. 
This leads to a faith structure that is regimented and ordered. Worrying is those within the faith who have lofty goals of reorganizing the world to follow this order through violence if necessary. Kazuthan clergy often go recruiting through poor and disaffected populations, offering progression in their clergy through a process of self-denial. The novices become strict ascetics and attempt to recruit others early on as well. Their goal is to be noticed by their superiors in, the ne- in their efforts so as to be able to be promoted in rank or terrace as they are called in this faith. At the lowest terrace, Kazuthans are to donate any made coin to their superiors while only keeping the bare minimum amount to gear themselves and keep themselves alive. A promotion in the Kazuthan faith is known as progressing to a higher terrace. With each promotion, the member gains greater material benefits. This provides the motivation for the recruits and those at other lower ranks to be devout to the point of zealotry. It is not unheard of for a lower-ranking Kazuthan to commit themselves to the flame, for they come to believe that should they perish through fire, they will be rewarded in the afterlife as one of Kazu's personal warriors. Despite the division that exists between the braziers and tendrils, they still observe the hierarchy found across both bodies. The highest given rank in the faith is that of the Eternal Flame. Eternal Flames serve as the temple's high clergy. Since braziers travel continuously, they know to follow any of the dictates given out by the closest Kazuthan Eternal Flame. These Eternal Flames are known for their tyrannical and stubborn perspectives and expect complete obedience from their lessers. The ranks or terraces of the Kazuthan faith in ascending order are the lightless, who are the novices of the faith, the promised, who are the first rank of full clergy, torch of the faith, righteous flame, devoted blaze, zealous pyre, pillar of flame, fury of the faith, flame brother or flame sister, inspired forge, numinous blaze, most fervid fire, and finally the eternal flame of Kazuth. Achieving promotion early on is entirely based upon experience up to the rank of devoted blaze. From there, a member needs a recommendation of two higher-ranking clergy members to be considered for promotion. The Eternal Flame is the approving authority and ultimately can approve or deny any promotion that crosses their desk. Out in the wild places of the world, the Kazuthan faith becomes far less organized. Typical Kazuthan societies of this variety are often led by shamans. These shamans may or may not lead their communities under the threat of violence. This is likely where Kazuthan druid circles can be found. Some, quote, several hundred years ago, fire newts began to engage with the human-run Kazuthan places of worship. At first, it was just fire newt mercenaries looking to offer their services, but eventually fire newts became so integral to Kazuthan temples and the like that they and their strider mounts more often than not serve as temple guards. What is interesting is that there is not any mention of some of these fire newts being clerics interfacing with human peers at such places. It is possible that the fire newts wish to keep their clerics strictly to their own communities, though it is stated that several of the fire newts based out of the human places of worship are hatched there. Since overseeing the hatching of fire newts' eggs is one of their chief responsibilities of fire newt clerics, I like to think that they have some there alongside the human clerics as well. Responsibilities and Duties of the Faithful Those who are neutral or lawful neutral Kazuthans look to pursue the accumulation of wealth, land, and influence despite their patron's deity's clear indifference. Any Kazuthans found to be disobeying superiors will find themselves excommunicated from the faith with this repeated behavior. More often than not, Kazuthans will excommunicate a member by tossing them in some nearby body of water. To be drenched by water in such a situation is considered to be one of the gravest insults a Kazuthan can receive. As it is, one can easily insult a Kazuthan by simply splashing them with water. The several lights and fires that are to be kept lit around the temple are the sole responsibility of the Kazuthan novices. Those at the higher ranks administer, maintain, and perform the expected required rites and tasks at a Kazuthan temple. Orders and Priestly Bodies There are three Kazuthan monk orders that fall across the good and evil alignment spectrum. The Disciples of the Phoenix are the lawful good order. 
The brothers and sisters of the pure flame are the lawful neutral order. Finally, the disciples of the salamander are the lawful evil order. These monk orders keep mostly to themselves and rarely interact with one another. They all practice a tradition of scholarship and martial arts. Each order has its own set taboos that have existed since the founding of each monastic order. The disciples of the phoenix will only consume food that has been cooked or has been heated by fire. So dead set are they on this practice, they will refuse unheated water or food and will rather starve to death. I did not find any mention of any of the other taboos held by the other two monk orders. The disciples of the phoenix strongly lean on the aspects of Kazuthan worship that espouse purification through fire. They can take such beliefs to extreme measures. They might punish themselves through red-hot brands. If they perceive something to have been a dire sin, they may even immolate themselves to death. The brothers and sisters of the pure flame try to balance the destructive and renewing aspects of Kazuth in their practice. Should the need arise, this order serves as a mediator between the other two monk orders. They learn the elemental tongue of Ignan to speak with elementals from the plane of fire. The disciples of the salamander favor the destructive aspects of fire in their practice. They brand themselves with religious and magical symbols. They also tattoo themselves with all sorts of flame motifs. The Knights of the Fire Drake are a holy order of warriors charged with being the personal bodyguards to the Eternal Flames. Lead those campaigning abroad in the name of Kazuth, or protect Kazuth in places of worship. The Order of the Black Flame is a secretive Kazuthan order of clerics, monks, rogues, and fighters, or any multi-class version of those classes. They are all trained in Kazuthan rites, stealthy tactics, and are a rather zealous group. Their mention is to go out and eliminate those who have given great offense to Kazuth and his faith. They are based solely out of Thay and do not hesitate to take out red wizards if necessary. The order is populated by high-ranking Kazuthan clergy who keep an eye out for those who have promised both within the clergy and those who are Kazuth worshippers outside the clergy. A popular rumor outside the order is that all within it are branded or tattooed on their body with a black flame. While some do mark themselves accordingly as a mark of piety, the order has never made this, re- made this a requirement. Each member is to have three specific pieces of equipment on themselves at all times. A kukri, the symbolic weapon of the order, a flame-colored piece of clothing, and a means to make fire, such as alchemist fire or flint and steel. Around their necks can often be found a vial of flammable oil strung to a necklace. This order passes along secretive messages to one another by drawing known symbols only to them on a surface and surrounding that symbol with a ring of dots. Sometimes the symbol may be encircled twice or thrice. Circling the symbol is meant to tell the viewer to interpret the symbol differently or to take it as false. Not only that, the order ensures they change the meanings of the dots from time to time. The Order of the Black Flame often draws such symbols upon doors. They use a specific type of ink called cobra scale ink, which is invisible save when heated with a source of fire. Members of the order adopt false personal names that they all refer to one another by. These names will be reused by others as time goes by so as to build up a certain reputation for an associated individual who seems to be active despite the passing of time, along with protecting one another's actual identities. Appearance and Dress The ceremonial dress of Kazuthan clergy features light robes that are crimson and orange in color. Many ceremonial robes feature embroidered elements depicting flames of differing colors. These designs often become more elaborate and ostentatious or for higher ranking clergy members. Armor is not to be worn during any ceremonies by the clergy, save by only the members of the Order of the Fire Drake who are allowed their armor. The holy symbol of Kazuth is formed out of a red-colored gemstone and set into a piece of jewelry. Such symbols are enchanted in a way to glow within, like a flickering flame. When adventuring, clergy tend to favor red and crimson in their clothing. They dress according to the location's weather conditions. They may wear chainmail and a shield, though most prefer forms of lighter magical protection that are available to them. Should a clergy member possess any magical items to cause destructive fire magics, 
They display such items proudly in the hopes of intimidating any who challenge them. Rituals Kazuthin clerics and clergy often meditate and pray during sunrise or at high sun, which is the Faerunian term for noon. They conduct such rites facing the south. Kazuthins believe that the sacred flame originates in that direction. This concept of the sacred flame was never expanded upon, so I do not know what this term refers to. Anything that is burned in Kazu's name is accepted by him. That has been noted that he has a preference for garnets, topazes, citrine, fine metalwork done with iron or other precious metals, nuts, fine oil, aromatic resins, and meat. In repayment, Kazuthans usually will receive some boon will, that will grant them some modicum of power or control over fire, or protect them from heat and flames. Kazuth will show greater favoritism with the boons he provides to those who have shown long-standing deference to him, and or to those known for their grand sacrifices. Kazuth's avatar has walked the surface more than any of the other three elemental deities. Still, this only amounts to less than a dozen appearances. This is thought to be because Kazuth will answer the major summoning rituals that beckon him forth from the plane of fire. There are two known rituals to achieve this avatar's arrival. The first is a gargantuan bonfire erected in his name. The second is a difficult summoning performed by his high-level clergy. The birthday of an internal flame is observed as a holy day and a festival is held at the respective temple. Massive bonfires are lit and large sacrifices are made in Kazu's name. High-ranking clergy from other Kazuthan temples and dignitaries, both local and foreign, are invited. Often this is done with the goal of pampering and bribing these individuals. The Oath of Firewalking is the final rite a novice needs to perform to become a full clergy member. From there, this rite also then needs to be performed for each individual who achieves a promotion in the face structure. As the name implies, this rite involves walking across a pit of hot coals. The length of the walk and temperature of the firewalk gets hotter for each promotion into the next rank. Kazuthans who are devout will pass over the coals unharmed. Though any who waver in their faith or harbor ill feelings towards the establishment either end up horribly burned or are consumed by flame entirely. How Kazuth is able to determine the thoughts and intentions of, the, of those participating in the rite is unknown, but it would seem he is able to do so. Fire Newts also attempt to show praise to Kazuth through painful acts, but unlike the vast majority of humanoid groups, walking across burning coals does not test a Fire Newt's pain threshold. Instead, they take their young and place them in cold water. Those who last over a minute are considered immediate candidates for the Kazuthan clergy. Those who do not last half a minute, however, are sacrificed in Kazu's name. Those who fall in between these two categories are then deemed warriors in training. The Unity of Fire is a ceremony conducted by a Kazuthan clergy member when they first become capable of bringing forth fire elementals from the plane of fire. A day is set aside before the elemental is summoned wherein the participant will chant and pray. The following day, the fire elemental is summoned and presented with a prepared meal and a copper coffer or a small stash of precious objects and or coin to bring back to Kazuth. The Flaming Brazier Temple, which I will discuss later in greater detail, conducts two unique rituals. The first is known as the Ceremony of First Fire. Kazuth in scripture speaks to how the sun is regarded as an avatar known as the Great Sky Fire. The sun lashes out at Akati, the elemental god of air, all throughout the day. Aside from the name and description as to the reason for the ritual, what occurs during the ceremony of first fire isn't stated. The second ritual is known as the burning rebirth, conducted at high sun. This hour-long ritual features one or more sacrifices in Kazu's name. Often such sacrifices include a slave, but sometimes a difficult Kazuthan clergy member might find themselves upon a flaming pyre. Fire Newt communities have a golden idol placed somewhere in veneration. This idol is made to look like a large lizard. If you remember earlier in the episode, the Fire Newts believe this is the real form of Kazuth, as this is the form they last saw him leave in at the end of the Time of Troubles. The gold accumulated by the Fire Newts is taken and melted down to form this idol. 
Kazuthan clerics and the community receive the greatest sum of gold from what the community brings in through all their evil deeds. Should the clerics have a new substantial of gold in their possession, they will melt the current idol down alongside this amassed gold and form an even larger golden idol. For this reason, fire new communities have varying sizes of golden idols. General Locations of Places of Worship Kazuthan temples are said to be under the watch of over 100 fire newt guardians. Here, the fire newts also stable their traditional mounts, the giant striders. The number of these striders is equal to half the fire newts present. I assume that it is likely that smaller places of worship would also have a reduced fire newt presence, if any at all. Given that most of the Kazuthan faith is strongly aligned lawfully, we are actually provided with a breakdown in the numbers of expected ranks of the clergy at each temple. A temple has an eternal flame at its head. Immediately beneath them are three members who are the most fervid fires. Each fervid fire then has two numinous blazes in direct service to them. From there, each numinous blaze has one clergy member of each rank down to the rank of devoted blaze under their authority. Finally, the temple will attempt to hold as many clergy in the lowest ranks as possible. Kazuthan temples and the like are built purposefully with material that can withstand some of the strongest fires produced both magically and naturally. Such building material includes hard stone, ceramics, and metals. Most of these places of worship are designed to be geometric in shape with rigid and blocky lines. Typically, they are built to look like ziggurats or step pyramids. Featured prominently are tall columns and pillars that are meant to symbolize a towering column of blazing fire, not unholy like the described appearance of Kazu's avatar. These temples are constantly lit with light and fire throughout all hours of the day. Within the holiest areas, the walls tend to feature decorative elements utilizing gemstones and precious metals. While Kazuthan temples are found within settlements and cities, Kazuthan shrines are placed near sources of fire, such as close to a volcano, or they may place their shrines in hot, arid areas, such as somewhere in a desert. Specific Places of Worship The former largest Kazuthan temple in Thay was found in the city of Tiratoros and called the Burning House of Kazuth. This roofless temple had flames that seemed to burn endlessly around the, perim- around the perimeter of the temple. Thayans often brought sacrificial animals and slaves to the temple in the hopes of gaining the notice of the uncaring Kazuth. Unfortunately, the temple gained the wrong sort of attention from Kazuth, and this temple was burned down. Taking its place as the largest and foremost Kazuthan temple is the flaming brazier found in the Thayan city of Byzantur. Now, the flaming brazier is described in great detail in the second edition source book, powers and pantheons. The book also includes a dungeon map of the temple. I will be touching upon the highlights of the flaming brazier rather than going into exhausting detail. The structure of the temple proper is made out of red marble and it takes the shape of a four-tiered step pyramid. There is a smaller three-tiered step pyramid in the complex as well and it houses the temple's catacombs. Inside the great pyramid is a grand chamber known as the inner sanctum. The temple's altar to Kazuth is found here, and it takes the form of a large, smoldering pit of lava, taking up the majority of the chamber's floor space. Throughout the temple are lit sacred fires, and fire elementals can be seen dancing about the outside of the temple. A protective wall made of cool lava surrounds the temple, and is constantly patrolled by the fire newt contingent who reside here. Other elementals from the plane of fire are a common sight but a protective ward surrounding the entire complex limits their movements to just within the confines of the temple complex. 300 Kazuthan clergy are housed in the flaming brazier. Unique only to this temple is the Order of the Flaming Warlocks. This order is made up entirely of red wizards who become Kazuthan clergy as well, though members of this order are mostly just clergy in name only and just playing the part. The order was founded to further ingratiate the Kazuthan faith to the Red Wizards. The other real clergy in the temple play the game by pretending to obey any orders that comes from the Order of the Flaming Warlocks, while double-checking what their actual superiors prefer doing what they were told. 
Four fire giants serve as sentinels at the temple's large brass doors. Found below the temple are the coal and sulfur mines. Here around 1,000 Thane slaves toil retrieving valuable resources and working the forges. The treasuries of the temple are protected by Ifrit who have been enslaved. In the Thane city of Escalon is an unnamed Kazuthan temple. Not much is said about the temple itself, though the temple does house a secret known only to select red wizards and Kazuthans. The secret is a one-way portal to the plane of fire created during the days of the Salamander Wars. Through this portal, the defeated Salamanders were sent back to their home plane. The portal is held in a vault inside the temple and is under constant watch. Some small rumors have gone out about the portal, and throughout Thay you might hear certain alternative takes as to what the true nature of this hidden portal is. In the ruined city of Amrathar stands, still stands the former city's Kazuthan temple. This black ziggurat was able to survive the magma and the earthquakes that otherwise ruined the rest of the city during the spell plague. It stands still active and in defiance to the Thayan ban on the worship of any other deity aside from Bane. As it is described, details for this temple are taken from a 4th edition source book, so it refers to the ban set in place during that era of the realms. This temple is led by an eternal flame, who is a mummy lord. The temple is guarded by elementals, fire giants, and Kazuthan clergy. At the eastern end of the Small Teeth Mountain range stands two dormant volcanoes known as Kazu's Eyes. The last times these volcanoes were active was during the construction of the dwarven city of Shanitar in negative 10,800 Dale Reckoning. There is mention that a dwarven clan known as the Azerkin were aided by Azers who could travel from the Plane of Fire to the, pla- to the Prime Material via the magma of these volcanoes. This clan had also become adept pyromancers, but their whereabouts now are shrouded in mystery. Old Dwarven scholars claim that they left the Prime Material for the Plane of Fire. Why Kazu's name was given to these two volcanoes, I don't know. It could just be that as the elemental deity of fire, his name was readily available at and applicable at the time the volcanoes were named. Perhaps there is a religious connection that has yet to be discovered, or I just miss a specific detail or details in a source book that I was doing research in. In the Thane Enclave in the city of Proskur, the unnamed temple of the Kazuth was built on the grounds of an abandoned temple to Joaquin. It stands 30 feet tall and is made of volcanic rock and stone. In the center of the temple is a large fire that is kept alive at all hours in a stone pit. A named temple to Kazuth, but without any further description, is the imperious flame in the city of Kalanport. Character Options For 2nd edition, the Kazuthan specialty priest variant called the Firewalker can be found in Face and Avatars. For 3rd edition, the Disciples of the Phoenix substitution levels for monks can be found in Champions of Valor. The Black Flame Zealot Prestige class for those looking to roleplay as a member of the Order of the Black Flame can be found in Unapproachable East. The Elemental Archon Prestige class can be found in Face and Pantheons. Finally, the Initiative Kazu feat can be found in Champions of Ruin. The following is just a breakdown of the features I think that someone deeply involved in Kazu's faith as an acolyte or otherwise would have for their background in 5th edition. For your two skill proficiencies, intimidation, and religion. For your language or tool proficiencies, likely you would know primordial, along with having a proficiency either with alchemist's supplies or smith's tools. For your equipment, I would suggest the accolades from the player's handbook. For the ribbon of feature, just use the shelter of the faithful tied to the accolade from the player's handbook. Next is just a list of subclasses that I think would be thematically appropriate for an NPC or PC to take if they are a worshipper of Kazuth in 5th edition. For Artificer, I think there is room for an Artillerist Artificer, which can be found in both Eberron Rising from the Last War and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, though they would be leaning heavy into fire and pyromancy. For Barbarian, there's the Path of the Zealot from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. I think this suits Kazuth's faith well and you could easily adapt to the Divine Fury feature of the subclass to deal fire damage instead. For the Cleric, there's the Light Domain from the Player's Handbook that is recommended for Kazuth in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. 
But as I mentioned at the top of the episode, there's also the Forge Domain that exists in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. For the Druid, while there are said to be Kazu-centric Druidic circles, they don't get much any of any mention in the lore. Still, the Circle of Wildfire Druid from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is fitting. For the Monk, there's the Way of the Four Elements Monk from the Player's Handbook, though you'd only be choosing the fire-based features. The Sun Soul subclass from Xyrathar's Guide to Everything and Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide could also be used and modified. The Sun Soul could easily be repackaged as a fire-based monk subclass by changing the features that deal radiant damage to fire damage. For the Paladin, there's the Oath of Conquest from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, which is fitting especially for the Thane-influenced Kazuthan Paladins found in the Knights of the Fire Drake. For the Sorcerer, there's the Divine Soul Sorcerer from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. For the Warlock, there's the Genie Patron who chooses an Efreeti Patron from Tashra's Cauldron of Everything. Finally, for Wizards, there's the College of Evocation and College of Conjuration from the Player's Handbook. I can see these two either being heavy on summoning elementals from the Plane of Fire, and or utilizing fire-based spells. Dungeon Master Options The first thing I like to cover in the Dungeon Master section of the podcast is just going over some of the available 5th edition monsters we have that are likely used by Kazuth or his clergy. From the Monster Manual, there's Azer, Efreeti, Fire Elemental, Fire Snake, Giant Fire Beetle, Magma Mephit, Magmen, Salamander, Smoke Mephit, and Fire Giant. From Eberron, Rising from the Last War, there's the Living Burning Hands construct. From Mordecai's Tome of Foes, there's the Fire Elemental Myrmidon. This stat block can also be found in the Princes of the Apocalypse Adventure Module. There's also the Phoenix Greater Elemental. From the Mythic Odysseys of Theros, there's the Oread stat block. From Volo's Guide to Monsters, there's the Fire Giant Dreadnought. Continuing on with monsters, I'd like to talk about a couple of monsters that, as of yet, do not have any official 5th edition stat blocks, but are mentioned uh, as being tied to Kazuth and his faith. Fire bats are native elemental creatures found in the Plane of Fire. They dive down as a group and bite into their targets, taking off chunks of meat or draining blood depending on the edition until they are full. Fire bats are approximately 4 feet in length, wingspan included. The body of the fire bat is continuously alight with flame, and it is only when they are killed that their bodies stop producing fire and cool. A fire bat has a 25% chance of a new fire bat splitting off from it. If food is plentiful, a fire bat population can grow out of control. The statistics for fire bats can be found in 1st edition's Monster Manual 2, 2nd edition's Monstrous Compendium Planescape Appendix 3, 3rd edition's Monster Manual 2, and 4th edition's Monster Manual. In general, a para-elemental is an elemental composed of two of the four primary elements, fire, air, water, and earth. Para-elementals can be unpredictable creatures. Smoke para-elementals can be found on the elemental plane of fire and air, given, given that these are the elements that they are made of but they are spawned out of the para-elemental plane of smoke. They appear as flying black pillars of smoke with glowing red-amber eyes. They lash out with their sickle-shaped claws that look to be made of smoke as well. Another tactic they use is engulfing a creature in their form, suffocating them with the poisonous vapors that they are made of. Magma para-elementals may be found on the elemental planes of fire and earth, though they are spawned out of the para-elemental plane that bears their name. They look roughly humanoid in shape. Their hulking bodies are made of hardened and cooled magma, but their hands or feet contain red hawk magma right near the surface of these body parts. Or in other additions, they lack legs, and the lower portions of their bodies are made of amorphous molten rock and stone. Their eyes and mouth exude a red hot glow. They are frontline brutes who like to rush into melee and grapple their foes. Their bodies also exude an aura of heat that is lethal to those who are within it for too long. The statistics for both of these para-elementals can be found in 1st edition's Monster Manual 2, 2nd edition's Monstrous Compendium Planescape Appendix 3, and 3rd edition's Manual of the Planes. To round out the section on monsters, the following are just a list of humanoid NPC stat blocks to represent various cause of worshippers and clergy. 
Keep in mind with the spellcasters, you can always swap out their listed spells for other spells more fitting to the themes you're trying to get at. For the mo- from the monster manual, there's the Acolytes. I also suggest the Assassin, especially if they're a member of the Black Flame Order, and the Priest. From Princes of the Apocalypse, though these are tied to Imex, you can easily reflavor them to being tied to Kazuth. There's the Eternal Flame Guardian, Eternal Flame Priest, Flame Wrath, and Razor Blast. From Volo's Guide to Monsters, there's the Conjurer, Evoker, Fire Newt, Warlock of Imix, again, reflavoring it back to being a worshiper of Kazuth, Fire Newt Warrior, Martial Arts Adept, and War Priest. And finally, from Rise of Tiamat, the Red Wizard. Let's round out this section of the podcast on DM options by talking about magic items. Surprisingly to me, there is no specific magic items that are tied to Kazuth or his faith given in any of the source books I looked through. So next, I'm just going to suggest some thematically appropriate magic items from official 5th edition sources that I feel the faith of Kazuth may have access to. From the Dungeon Master's Guide, Armor of Fire Resistance, Belt of Fire Giant Strength, Brazier of Commanding Fire Elementals, Candle of Invocation, Circle of Blasting, The Efriti Bottle, Efriti Chain, Elemental Gem, Ever Smoking Bottle, Flame Tongue, Helm of Brilliance, a Lantern of Revealing, Necklace of Fireballs, Potion of Fire Breath, Potion of Fire Giant Strength, Ring of Fire Elemental Command, Ring of Fire Resistance, Ring of Warmth, Staff of Fire, Wand of Fireballs. From Gilmaster's Guide to Ravnica, you could reflavor the Sunforger. From Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, there's the Candle Mace and the Gauntlets of Flaming Fury. From Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the Elemental Essence Shard, specifically the Fire Variant, and Fire Absorbing Tattoo. From Eberron Rising from the Last War, the Everbright Lantern. From Princes of the Apocalypse, Tinder Strike, this powerful magical dagger, those associated with Imix, could easily be reflavored to be associated with Kazuth. And the Devastation Orb of Fire. From Storm King's Thunder, Opal of the Ild Rune. From Tales from the Yonic Portal, the Robe of Summer. And finally, from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, Smoldering Armor. Alright, thank you for listening to Religion in the Realms. If you're interested in keeping up with the release of future episodes, you can follow the podcast Twitter account at Realms Religion. These episodes are also uploaded to YouTube as well. The podcast's YouTube channel can be found under the title Religion in the Realms. Audio versions of the podcast can be found on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play Podcasts. If you wish to get in touch with me with any questions or just want to chat, my personal Twitter account is at ShivsEmbrace, or you can send an email to realmsreligion at gmail.com, all in lowercase. I don't mention the Discord server all that much these days just because it doesn't really seem to be growing whatsoever anytime I mention it. But if you are interested, you can find a link to this server pinned on the podcast Twitter's page or in the video description of the episode itself. In the next episode, we will continue on with the group of elemental deities with a look at Grumbar, the neutral god of Earth. Until next time, may Timora look kindly upon your dice rolls. Helm protects you, and Lathander lights your path. Music for this episode, Mani by Ian Grimm.